always get caught short when that stops playing. I love that music. I do too. Have Rebe. Go StreamYard. Go hey. StreamYard. Thank you, StreamYard. We appreciate hey. you. Oh. Hey, welcome yeah. to the live recording of the Create Bold Impact Show with Haas oh. and Woo! And my friend today is Miss Sarah. And if you, Sarah, and if you saw the uh, graphic, I actually put Sarah's book as the second part of our friends because we're going to talk a little oh, bit about. I just I, I put the little. It. I put the I put the sheep. The, the people. Oh, you put, mean, the people. They're so cute. Vessel and whatever. I can share that with you, Sarah, because you probably didn't even get to see it before. No. Let me go grab that. So in case anyone's never met me before, my name's Cindy Lou. I'm the creator and founder of Be Bold You, personality expression system, which helps you to figure out who in the heck you want to become in the world. And I wrote a book about it, which is called Becoming Bold You. And I'd love for you to get that book. And you can do that by going to cindylou.com forward slash BBY book. What do you think of that? Woo. Pretty cool. Hopefully that uh, link works. And if it doesn't, I'll make sure it does by the end of the day. <laughs> Pretty sure it works though. And this is my friend Sarah, and she's going to introduce herself. I'm going to introduce myself. Well, hi, I'm Sarah. I am an author and a truck driver and an administrator and a super organized person um, who loves the spontaneity in life. Not so much, but is learning to appreciate it. Um, I have worked with Cindy Lou through the Be Bold You program and I cannot tell you how good it is and the huge difference that it's made in my life. If you really want to know and you really want to see, go back a few months and have a look. Oh my gosh, look at that. Threw a little spontaneity in there for you <laughs> while she was explaining stuff. Yeah, and I lose the plot, but, you know, it's okay. That is Isn't super cute. You? It's time you change that photograph of me. That is such an old photo. I know. Well, we've got to get one. We've got to get one. we get one. we got some good events coming up soon to get one from you. <laughs> oh, we sure do. You can send me another one, and I will change it out for next week. Oh. You let me know which one you want. Challenges. Challenges. I love Ooh. me challenge. Challenges. <laughs> So anyway, Sarah was saying, if you look back a few and you look at her talking and you look at her now, you can actually visually see the difference. Yeah. You can. Mm. You're more confident. You're more relaxed. You're learning to go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big one for me. <laughs> Going with the flow is like, there's a talent to it, I guess. I, I'd never thought about it because I've always done it. Yeah. It's a natural part of who I am. So I don't think about the fact that maybe I could teach that. I think it's also a matter of trust. You know, when you learn to trust the person that you're with, then <sighs> you're able to go so much more with the flow because you get it and you know who each other is and you're able to work with each other. I think a big thing of it is trust. That's the key. That is actually the key. Absolutely. Not only trusting yourself, but trust, but specifically for me, trusting the person I'm with. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, Sarah, you have this book that you're writing. I do. And we will need to promote the book because we have to promote books, right? We can't just writing. It's the easy part, actually. <laughs> The next step is telling people that you have a book and putting the book out there. Now, you've done some stuff with pre-sales yes. and you announced it at your big party, which was kind of cool. Yes. Yes. And I don't we stop taking, I don't stop talking about it. I take flyers with, with, about it with me everywhere I go and I give people a flyer and on the flyer is a little QR code and that takes them directly to the website. Ta-da! Which That's we need cool. to actually make double sure now that I've got TransferWise set up, whether or not we can do that or if we need to set up Stripe as well for New Zealand. Okay. We will work on that. Definitely. So that's a note to self. Note to self. Note to self. Yeah, I got my Stripe set up and it's 
it's so simple to do payments to New Zealand bank accounts that way through Stripe. So it's worked very well. It is a process though that you have to kind of go through. Get mm -hmm. approved before. Again, back to planning, right? Planning it and preparing and getting ready. There's so many pieces, so many pieces mm -hmm. of being an online business. And, and any business, really. I mean, if you were going to do a store, you have to have, you know, a storefront, you got to have cash registers, you got to have product for the shelves, you you know, you got to have people to put the product on the shelves, you have to have people to check the people out. You got to have the shelf, the, the whole area clean down first and then you've got to decide on the paint color and you've got to get it painted and you've got to get it decorated and you've got to get all those finishing little touches and so on there. Sarah's the detail person. <laughs> I'm a 30,000 foot view person. <laughs> you need a store. <laughs> and this is how we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's awesome. So let's talk about your book. What would you like to know? What do you think you want to talk about, about your book in sharing it with others? Or what have you already been talking about as you've shared it with others that you've seen them kind of go, oh, that's interesting. Like, where have you seen that light bulb come on for people or the, you know? Well, yesterday when I was talking about it, you three different occasions yesterday first was at a cafe and they said oh well if you want to do the book launch we're totally there with you I was like, awesome. that is freaking amazing that is seriously huge um coverage because it's a really well populated cafe and i've been going there for the last three years ever since it opened so that is that is huge because that was the manager himself who said that the second was a girlfriend and she was like, oh, I love the sound of that. Give me the, give me, give me, give me. So I gave her a copy of the, the thing and she's like, oh, oh, I've got to go and try out this QR code thing and see how it works. And then the third time was with somebody I'd never met before, but they were a vet and they were just absolutely thrilled at the idea of showing the humane side of sharing. So for the vet, it was the message was the humane side of sharing. For um, my girlfriend, it was a cute story about, well, it's not just a cute story, but about how we can go through challenging difficulties with the children that we are raising and grooming to be young men and women and those who haven't yet made up their mind to grow into healthy, robust adults with a good understanding of the right kind of scary and the wrong kind of scary and the other guy the manager just was so excited that I was doing something like this and wanted to promote so everyone kind of had a different reason that they want to do it yeah they want to help and they want to connect with you okay yeah so thinking about then changing that over to what would you share online for lives what are the topics? What Can you come up with maybe five topics that you'd like to share about that relate to your book in one way or another? Um, I would say that there's a message about facing challenging situations with somebody that you trust. I would say there's the message about the humanity of sharing and the reasons why we do it. Okay, wait a minute. What was the first one? So the first one is is going through scary situations with people we trust. Scary? Scary. Scary situations with ones we trust. Yeah. So... For Cecil, he doesn't want to get his fleece cut. For a small child, it might be that they don't want to get their hair cut because they're convinced it's going to hurt. For somebody else, it might be a rite of passage and getting their ears pierced. Um, again, something that they're happy scared about. And the difference between being happy scared um, and being terrified and, and the flow-on effect of that happy scared resulting in a really 
decent endorphin rush as opposed to the wrong kind of scared, which is the, well, I won't call it wrong kind of scared, but the kind of protective scared feeling that leaves you feeling dirty and filthy and just yuck about the whole situation um, after you've, you know, after the, the situation has finished. So that might be, you know, a traumatic experience you need to talk about. It might be a car accident you need to talk about, or it might be something that, you know, somebody did to you that you need to talk about and work your way through, um, you know, whatever that is, but still being able to talk about it with with people and, and work it through until you get to a place where you can at least live with it, not dominating your thoughts. So what I heard so there was a propelling fear. Mm -hmm. and a protecting fear there you go perfect i love thank, how we work together thankfully this is recorded so you can go back and get that <laughs> <laughs> so, topic two because you can do a video now that tells the difference between a propelling fear and a, and a protective fear and how your book can actually help people with both of those because it does it helps you to understand the two different kinds. Yeah. And it shows you how when you find a safe place and someone who you trust, that you can face the fears that are the protective fears you've had all your life and release them and even replace them possibly with propelling fear. There you go. Just saying. So that's one. Two, so topic two. Three. <clears throat> yeah, three, three lives already. Yeah. Or three, or, or three points for one life. You, so you could do it either way. Right? You could do three lives talking about each of those one little things. So they could be three short lives. Or you could do a longer live that kind of recaps all of them. Yep. And then four would be... Um, Modern uses for wool. So are you telling me that topic one just turned into more than one topic? <laughs> no, I started out with the humanity of sharing, which was topic number one. Number two was the propelling or protective fear. Number three was facing the protective fears and turning them into propelling fears. Okay. So you and then topic four is... So I'm going to let you, I said, you've written them differently than I have. So I'm going to take that thing, that banner that I put up there, thought I was helping. And I'm going to let you go with what you've written because that, that's Ooh. how it makes sense in your mind. But it may also spark something off in mind. So don't, don't, don't delete it. No, I haven't delete. deleted it. It's still right here. Whoops. Ooh. Scary situations with ones we trust. Yes. Right. And topic then I was, two. topic two is which? Facing protective fears and turning them into propelling fears? Active or is fear. that part of scary yet? Well, so here's the thing. So is that, that's what I'm saying. Topic one kind of became those subtopics, right? Within that topic. So you've got the topic, which is scary situations. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ah, yeah. So you're just saying topic one is talking about different scary situations. I'm there. I got there. And now topic two is talking about specific. No, topic two is facing protective fears and propelling. No, no. no. Topic, topic two is, as you say, is, is the difference between a propelling fear and a protective fear. Uh -huh, okay, so comparing, comparing fears. Mm -hmm. Comparing fears. Propelling versus protective. Okay, so there's topic number two. Add the banner. Put it up there. Boom, topic two. Boom. Number three is the humanity of sharing. You know, I should have written these. I should have done numbers instead of writing them out. The humanity. <laughs> We learn the humanity of shearing. 
if I spell shearing correctly, you'll let me know. S H E A R I N G. You got it. Yay. Okay. Oh, no, that's actually topic four. Okay. I'm sorry. That's topic four. I can I can edit this. I have the power. Edit. Four. Save. Create a banner. Topic three. Is. And topic three is facing protective fears. Yep. And that's the kind of fear that may have been instilled in you as a child. For example, um, a fear of spiders or a fear of never having enough. Um, it might be a protective fear of not wanting to open the door after dark. It might be, you know, whatever it is, just just so we're facing the protective fear and turning it into a propelling fear. So learning how we can face those fears that were protective, that were there designed to protect us, but now we're at a different level of maturity. And so we can now use them instead of being a stumbling block and turn them into a stepping stone. Okay. So facing protective fears to create stepping stones? Fear from stumbling block to stepping stone. Facing protective fears. So it will be f um, from stumbling from stumbling block to stepping stone is from how I would put it. Block. Mm -hmm. To stepping stone. Stepping stone. Mm -hmm. so I it this way. Tell me if you like it. Mm. We could just do facing fear. Yeah, get rid of protective. Protective. yeah, yeah, yeah. Facing fear, singular. Yeah, because it's an all-encompassing fear. You talked about the protective and the propelling right before that. So now yep. you're facing it. Yep. Save. There we go. So there's, oops, got to put back up on there. <laughs> From stumbling yep. block to stepping stone. Yep. Yep. And topic four is humanity of sharing. Humanity of sharing. And yep. topic five is modern uses for wool. Topic five. Modern uses for wool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is an interesting topic. And I want you to talk about that a little bit more. The last two topics are, you know, so your book is primarily focused, this this first book is primarily focused on helping children to face their fears, basically, from mm -hmm. the textural and the pictorial, pictorial thing. Mm -hmm. The undertone is there that you're introducing this whole idea of shearing and the wool and and taking us another level. Yep. So it's like that's the undercurrent for the parents, the adults. And because, uh, you know, storylines often will have two storylines happening at the same time. A really good movie will have two storylines happening at the same time. Yeah. Something for the adults and something for the children. And that's what Disney yeah. does very, very well. Yeah. So mm. I love that you're doing this. This is really cool. So modern uses for wool. How are you going to tie that into the book? Well, at the end of the story, Cecil realizes that he hasn't lost his wool. His wool has a future use. So it's not in the same way that when we cut our hair, there are other uses for our hair. So some children might like to donate their hair to children, other children who are going through cancer therapy. Some children may want to donate their hair as... Or adults may want to donate their hair for other people wanting hair extensions. Um, and so the same is, is true for sheep, although they possibly don't think about it in the same way that we do. <laughs> However, uh, it's important to recognise that that's not a waste product and that there is purpose to the shearing. 
not the least of which is to protect the animals from becoming fly blown and mag maggot infested, which is a really gross subject. And seeing it happen um, is just such a brutal way for an animal to die. And so shearing is not the archaic monster of a task that a farmer needs to do in order to earn some money because at the moment it's a different kind of white shining, the signing the check for the farmer. If it, anyway, that's another topic. <laughs> so staying on target, I will continue with the wool. So we have a whole lot of synthetic uses around the, around the house. So we've got like, whoops, the curtains behind me can be made from very fine wool fiber. We've got the wool coverings, whoops, that way, bring my arm in that way there. You can have wool wallpaper. Now, the beauty of these 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 fibers is that not only do, are they durable and hard wearing, and are they insulating, but they're also fire retardant naturally without any chemical. And so, for those of us who are wanting a more natural environment that is more sympathetic to the in, to the environment that we live in, but also to ourselves, recognizing that we're not putting toxic chemicals around us then we have the opportunity to use fibre in the walls that is used, that comes from less useful wool, but really strong wool. So there's different kinds of wool even. You know, how many different kinds of snow are there? Yeah. That's how many different kinds of wool there are. You've got the very fine micron, which is what we think of when we think in terms of um, very fine merino clothing is a very fine merino wool <clears throat> i can't tell you exactly the, the microns you've got the thicker farmers jerseys the 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 woolly jerseys that we wear out on, on the farm that we wear a lot out here and they are a much stronger wool they're a much thicker wool and so they've got a better insulation quality about so them those are all things that you can do with wool that people may not be available uh, aware yeah. of and that's some of the stuff that you want to add into you see this bookshelf behind me i see that bookshelf you're tapping it quite nicely you're getting quite good at this thank you um they're actually fusing the rubbish wool with cornstarch oh wow to make bookshelves that's to replace cool. plastic. That's really cool. And there's a young man in Timaru who has a business that he is doing this. So it's 100% renewable, 100% environmentally friendly, 100% biodegradable, 100% regenerative. Okay. It's extraordinary. So your books <laughs> are going to open a door for conversations yeah okay so that is another piece for us to think about mm -hmm. down the road mm -hmm. is where are those conversations going to be housed hmm. i know a place that might be really good oh really clubhouse <laughs> yeah, <I'm thinking> the same <laughs> oh so anyway that is step one of planning it. And then we pretty much have looked at, we've got five topics, which I think was our goal for today was to, for you to walk away with five videos that you could do that will promote yeah. your book. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still not sure how the wool one's going to tie into promoting the book. So I'm looking forward to how you're going to twist that for me next week when we come to prepare it. Because next week we're going to take these five topics and we're going to look at what are, what are you going to say about each one and how does each one tie back to the book and how do you promote it to make sure that what you're talking about then gives you an inroad to say, and you can find out more about this in my book or, this is introduced in my book or however you're going to put it. That's mm -hmm. going to be, you're going to tell me next week when we look at preparing, <laughs> because we're going to look at how do we prepare our topics for sharing them 
Mm. With bullet points, so we know what we're going to talk about, but we don't have it scripted out word for word. Unless you're me, and then you have it scripted out, and you still don't do it according to the script. <laughs> I was going to say, as long as you don't read the script, I'm okay with you scripting it out. Yeah. Because that's the thing. When you script it out, for you, that solidifies it in your brain. Yes. And you know me, when I talk it out, that's what solidifies it in my brain. Yes. So I have to live my life out loud. I have no choice because <laughs> if I don't, I do not get clarity of thought. And I've been struggling all week to get clarity of thought. And I just realized that I need to schedule time with a friend or two of mine. I might know one. Oh, really? Where I can simply talk about my strategy and where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So we might be doing that soon. <laughs> that sounds good. I look forward like, to the conversation. The video. <laughs> is going to be in two minutes. I want to thank you guys for watching this today. I hope that this was helpful. I know you're watching it in live on demand because it's so much simpler to do that. But I hope this was helpful to just kind of watch our brainstorming process. That really was literally what we were doing was brainstorming with a, um, it wasn't a full brainstorming. So because full on brainstorming is everything comes out. There's no judgment, whatever. We're in that next kind of stage, which that's the picture it, right? That's the picture it. That's the brainstorming. Just psh, we did that last week. And we've done that for a couple of weeks, actually. But we did it about your book last week, as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. And then this week, we now took a particular thing. Like, here's the focus. And we want to take some of those thoughts that we had and get them ready to get them out to the public. Mm hmm so this is step one of plan it, and then we will look at planning it and preparing it next week. Yeah. <clears throat> Until then, have a great week. We'll see you, you then. Too. We're going to have to do a goodbye thing.